Hi everyone and welcome to The Vintage Company. My name is Julie and I'm a corporate historian. And every episode I take a look at a different vintage consumer product and the story behind how and why it was made. And this week is all about a consumer product that made having an electric refrigerator in your own home not only affordable, but an absolute necessity. General Electric's Monster Top Refrigerator. Now, the monster top was by no means the first form of refrigeration or even electric refrigeration. Ice boxes, or cabinets with large pieces of ice on the top shelf and perishables on the bottom, had been around since the 1800s and had since become a staple of many middle class households. However, ice boxes required routine deliveries from the ice man and dripped when the ice melted. A housewife had to keep a close eye on the ice box's drip pan to make sure it didn't overflow. Mechanical refrigeration for the home remained elusive, despite the best efforts of brands like Kelvinator, Frigere, and General Electric. Early electric refrigerators were large, noisy, and expensive. Most were close to $1,000. Just to put that in perspective, $1,000 in those days could buy you two cars. In 1921, there were only 5,000 refrigerators manufactured in the United States. After nearly 15 years of research, General Electric finally broke the domestic electric refrigerator code and released model R52 in 1927. The model R52 featured a sparkling white all-steel exterior. The all-steel case was a first for the industry that would become the gold standard for generations of refrigerators to come. Its hermetically sealed compressor was perched on top, giving rise to its iconic nickname, Monitor Top a reference to the shape of the Civil War battleship Monitor. The Monitor Top had several key advantages over its competitors. Much like the Model T Ford automobile, it could be mass-produced. This brought the price down to only $525. And General Electric and local dealers promoted payment plans to make the refrigerator more accessible for middle-class families. It was extremely quiet in comparison to other refrigerators at the time. Advertisements noted, Stand three feet away from a General Electric refrigerator, and you probably won't know if the motor is on or off. It's quieter than a clock. It was also more efficient than earlier models, capable of keeping heat out and cold in, so that food was always kept at a consistent temperature. And the hermetically sealed compressor, quote, protected against tampering and against the ravages of air, dust, and moisture the agents of deterioration that make repeated repairs necessary. By far, General Electric's biggest advantage was its marketing. And I have to say, looking at these advertisements from the 1930s, I would for sure buy this refrigerator. They are absolutely gorgeous. And as part of the launch for the Monitor Top Refrigerator, General Electric published this cookbook, Electric Refrigerator Recipes and Menus. Written by Ms. Alice Bradley, the principal of the Miss Farmer School of Cookery, this book includes a wide range of cold food and drink recipes, as well as menus for all occasions, from afternoon bridge to after-theater luncheons. And of course, all recipes were customized to the specialized features of the General Electric Refrigerator. In the book's introduction, Ms. Bradley wrote, to many people, electric refrigeration is still such a novelty that they scarcely realize the range of possibilities. It is almost like having an Aladdin's lamp and not knowing the right way to rub it. With a general electric refrigerator, simple recipes, easily prepared, produce delightful results. The refrigerator itself requires no attention, not even oiling, and is surprisingly easy to keep clean. The owning of such a refrigerator is a form of health and happiness insurance which every homemaker in America should have the privilege of enjoying. The book also contained tips and advice for using and caring for your refrigerator, including how to arrange its contents, how to freeze multiple things at once, 
and how to use your refrigerator to make leftovers more attractive. I'll put a link to the digitized book in the description below just in case you'd like to try any of these recipes for yourself. Some of them actually look pretty good, but I'd steer clear of the jellied chicken, just personally. Soon, every middle-class home found itself incomplete without an electric refrigerator. Just four years after its introduction, General Electric produced its one millionth model, which it presented to Henry Ford to be included in his Edison Institute of Technology, which is today known as the Henry Ford Museum. In 1934, the design of General Electric's refrigerator was streamlined to move the compressor from the top to the base of the fridge, leading to the so-called flat-top model. The monitor top would soon fall out of fashion, but its impact was profound. Total refrigerator sales had reached almost 1.4 million units. By the early 1940s, that number rose to nearly 3.8 million. Once a novelty reserved for the very rich, an electric refrigerator was finding its way into kitchens and lifestyles across the United States. Today, over 99% of households in the U.S. have a refrigerator, making it the most widely owned appliance. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know if you try out any of the recipes from the electric refrigerator menus and recipe book and how they turn out. If you want to learn more about the histories of companies and the products that they made or still make today, please like and subscribe below. Thank you and I'll see you next time. Thank you.